one of the oldest dictatorships in the world, headed by General Tan Shui. Without a doubt, one of the worst tyrants in the world. Well, almost, because in North Korea, there's stiff competition from Kim Jong-il. The difference is that Burma has recently started welcoming tourists, especially tourist dollars. To encourage them to visit the country, they made this cute little movie. life, well-being, if you believe the regime, Burma is paradise on earth. When you see this absurd propaganda, you ask yourself, what's behind all that? So we decided to go there, to get an inside look into the daily life of the Burmese people, to understand what it's like living in a dictatorship, getting up, working, studying, getting information. All that must be very complicated. Oh, by the way, Journalists are not welcome here. So we're going to pretend we're just tourists. You cannot pronounce the word Burma here in this country. Since 89, the junta decided to rename the country Myanmar, which means the first inhabitant of the world. But of course, all that is just propaganda. The regime is especially touchy about this issue. The Burmese ambassador to the United Nations constantly issues reprimands to impose the use of Myanmar on countries like France or the United States that don't recognize it or refuse to use it. One of the first things you realize when you arrive in Rangoon is that 99% of the cars have the steering wheel on the right side. And they drive also on the right side, what is extremely dangerous. That is why they all have lucky items. You need somebody like me, you need a co-pilot. Ah, uh, yes, in yes. If I want to the, uh, pass to the, uh, another car, yeah. I need to tell you at the in front car will be come or not. Yeah, okay. If you see the no come, I can pass. So I'm your co-pilot, okay? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no co-pilot, huh? Yes. What you must know is that the direction of the traffic changed in 1974 when the astrologers of the former chief of the Genta, Newin, told him that it would bring him luck. But the Burmese are out of luck. Cheap cars mostly come from Japan, with the steering wheel obviously on the wrong side of the car. So they make do. And of course, for public transportation, it's the same problem. As you can see here, the steering wheel is on the right side. So here, as you can see, I enter on the left side. And when I exit, of course, I finish in the middle of the street, what's extremely dangerous. I'm not quite sure I would like to be a bus driver here in Burma. Ready? Yes, ready? Okay, dangerous, huh? I'll try. First time, huh? <laughs> Mm. 
here we're in a public uh, gas station. We're not supposed to film here, so we're staying in the car. Every Burmese is allowed about two gallons per car, no more. It's an obvious way to uh, limit the travels in the country. And to be sure they don't go beyond those two gallons, they have to use this small little booklet. Here I'm in front of a private station where you can buy unlimited gasoline. It's actually a way for those in the Genta to sell the gasoline they didn't already use. And as you can see, the security is extremely bad. In Burma, each tourist has the right to enter the country with $2,000 in cash, max. There are no other methods of payment. No credit cards, no traveler's checks, Hello. nothing. Here, cash is king. Can I change this? Change? Those change, yeah, have change in kyat. Kyat. Can I have in kyat? Uh, do you have another one now? Why? There's a problem? Mm -hmm. In your country, it's okay. <laughs> what, what's, so, what's, yeah. what's the problem? The, 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 the line. The line here? <laughs> so that's, I can't change that. You don't have the another one? No, this, but there's a problem with this? Mm -hmm. Also, what's the problem with this one? This one, uh, this one, this one. This one. Oh, you mean this here? Yeah. That, that's a problem there? Yeah, that's a problem. And that's a problem here? The, the, that is no good. So none of, none of those, uh, none of those is okay. <laughs> Out of my two thousand dollars, almost half of the bills either have a tiny stain or aren't completely perfect. So no one wants them, simply because the junta doesn't accept them. <laughs> Only 1% of the population actually have a bank account. Firstly, because it's very difficult to open one, and also because the bank can disappear just like that. That is why the Burmese people have to find other ways to invest their money, and sometimes very strange ways. Uh, tell me, if, if I want to buy a, a SIM card, can you, can you write to me the price to have a, an official big SIM card? How much is it? $1,800 for one SIM card? That's unbelievable. You must know that the Burmese people earn every month about $30. You can imagine what $1,800 is. They actually invest in those cards and rent them around them. So in Burma, you invest more in SIM cards than in real estate. So that's that's Aung San. General Aung San. Okay. Here we have a normal bill of 100 kyat. But what is quite incredible is at the end of the 80s, the junta decided to press some bills that are all multiples of nine. Okay, this is 100. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but 90 is weird. That is also an astrology number. Okay. Nine is supposed to be a good number for the junta. So you have bills of 90 and 45 kyat, what is absolutely absurd. 
But this is incredible. I mean, 90 and 45 yeah. is really funny. Yeah. But this is not very easy to make the change, you know? If I want to pay, yeah. uh, it's, it's complicated yeah. with 90 they, and, they and 30 pack. Yeah, this have. lasted only a few years and created a huge fiasco, an economic fiasco, and they decided to come back to reason and come back to normal bills. Welcome to Burma. Here I'm in front of the University of Yangon. It used to be a very active university, but the Genta doesn't like the students to be concentrated in one place in the center. That is why they decided to send them far away from the city. I'm going to show you. Here I'm in front of the University of East Yangon, one of the universities created by the regime far away from the city. You have to come from Rangoon to here. Yeah. So it's about a long, long way to go to school. Yeah, yeah, long. Every day you go back to Rangoon. Yeah. There's about 10,000 students who come to study here every day and 50,000 who depend on this university for what they call e-learning. I've just met a student in front of the university who has agreed to take me to his place to talk about their famous Junta-style e-learning. On the condition that we don't film his face, we change his name, and the neighbors don't see our little camera. So, Jojo, you told yeah. me that uh, in your home here, uh, uh, you had uh, one of those cassettes of e-learning. Yes, of course, I have. So we don't need to go to university all the time. OK. We so learn from the cassettes. Yeah. If you don't understand, you cannot ask to. Uh, That's it, That's OK. It. So you don't have any help. Uh, you know, You're I'm, alone. Uh, and it's more, more difficult to learn. Okay. So thanks to Jojo, I was able to get a surprising look into a Burmese family's day-to-day -day life. Oh, by the way, when I arrived in your home here, yes. come here I saw uh, two big uh, items here. Yes. What is, what is that for? That is uh, the transformer. This is for used for uh, re regulate the electricity. Okay. And what, what about this one here? This is one for, uh, for battery use. Whenever electric no can, we can use these. So we can watch the, the TV all the time. Ah, okay, so that's very important to be able to watch TV. What, what do you watch on TV? What yes, sort? Uh, because here is uh, Korea City is uh, very popular, so using this, uh, we can miss it. Okay, so maybe tonight yes. I can uh, stay with you and watch the, the, the Korean show with you? But after TV, you have to go back to your home. Ah, wh uh, why? Do I, I can't uh, stay uh, yeah, too late? You cannot sleep here because we, uh, if you sleep here, huh, we have to, to ask permission from our township committee. Yes. Is it because I'm a foreigner? No, 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 not, you are not a foreigner. Even my friend from uh, other township, if, if they want to stay my home, yeah. uh, we, uh, we need to do the uh, uh, same procedure oh. like that. Okay, well, well, you know what, we won't stay too late. <laughs> it's all so good for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now the state television is really something. The Burma that the junta depicts on its channels is really a make-believe country with magnificent public buildings, sumptuous scenery. Everything is smooth and without blemish. It radiates harmony and national unity. As for their evening news, it's an endless stream of soothing statements, all devoted to the glory of the regime. It's the game shows that provide what are perhaps the only moments of escape. But they're kind of pathetic. I decided to make a break here at the Traders Hotel, which is the place to be if you're close to the gender. 
you can find here high class prostitution. And also, of course, you can read this. First, it's filled with propaganda ads explaining how to behave, how to be a good, obedient and disciplined citizen. The only articles with a little bit of content are almost all about public works or industrial machines or about ribbon cutting ceremonies at public buildings or bridges that they love. You also find weird reports of official speeches given by the generals, reports that somehow manage to avoid talking about the content of the speech, all the while telling us that the audience really enjoyed it. As for the international news, it's a complete caricature. The newspaper copies articles from the internet without ever giving the source. And finally, when the newspaper mentions the US or the UK, it's always in a grotesque way. Like here, for example, with this story about a vulture invasion in Florida. And we don't really see anyone who would support this daily, especially not the Burmese. They use it to clean their windows. <laughs> Okay, we finally uh, found a uh, internet connection here in the hall of this hotel and we're going to try and check our email for a start. The, the mail access has been denied. Maybe another one. Let's try maybe Hotmail. Access has been denied. Okay, let's try maybe uh, just for general information like a uh, international AFP, AP or Reuters for example. Reuters, let's try that. Okay. Access has been denied. Okay, well, it's not here that we'll manage to get a good connection on the internet or check our emails. We'll try somewhere else, maybe in Rangoon, with a bit of luck. Hello? Excuse me. Look, we're looking for uh, internet with email. Internet. Internet over there? Yes, yes. Yeah, the, yes. Bil the big building. Uh, the bon Thank you very much. Uh, can I use uh, Gmail? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Because we try everywhere, it doesn't work. Here, here it works. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. So let's give it a try. Okay. Okay, now you must be quite patient. Like, very patient. Extremely patient. seems you can actually access your Gmail account. The only problem is that it's not a secure connection and that the regime can actually read your emails. One last thing, once you've finished with internet, you have to give your address, your name and your passport number. Welcome to Freedom Country. Here I'm in front of a field, a traditional field that you can see in the region. And you can see that part of it is dedicated to this small little tree behind me. That's called the Kietsu. And here you can actually see uh, the fruit that's supposed to be used in the production of the biodiesel. That's Kietsu. Yeah. Kietsu here. Kitsu. Yes, All that is Kitsu. Yes, he cannot product the biodiesel from the Czech food because he has a no machine, no alcohol, no uh, 
protection, you know, no to, instrument. I understand. Right is more better for people. Yeah. You know, BTSU is also forced by the government to must be plant the, this plantation. So the government, government by force. obliged by yeah, force yes. to do Kietsu. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, thank you very much and uh, good luck. OK, we're going to try and uh, go in here, but uh, I'm not quite sure about it. Ministry of Agriculture. I can't believe we're inside. The craziest thing is that we've managed to convince them that we were professionals fascinated by biodiesel. We managed to come here and visit the process that you need to go through if you want to create biodiesel from Kietsu. You add that into this. So to sum up, the process is highly complex and very expensive. $9,000 for the conversion kit. A Burmese farmer just can't afford it. Locals even plant Kietsu in the center of the city. Kietsu. The regime believes it's a way to neutralize the opponent Aung San Suu Kyi, because Suu Kyi and Kietsu are opposite. Kietsu, Suu Kyi. That's opium pipe. Like this? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. You can you can you can lie? Yeah. On the mat. You have to lie, because if you don't lie you fall. <laughs> when you come to Burma, you can very easily buy an opium pipe or an opium weight like this one. But what you must know is that the country is actually the second producer of opium in the world after Afghanistan. What's quite funny is that on one hand the regime actually benefits of this traffic. And on the other hand, it's actually created a huge museum, a fight against the drug. If we go by the museum's records, we are the first visitors in ages. Yet there are thousands of square meters on three levels that are sitting empty, just waiting for visitors. At the same time, you can't really tell who this circus is meant for. So we're here and I'm absolutely alone. There's nobody in this three-store building entirely dedicated to the fight against the drug. If you think that Yangon is the capital of Burma, you're wrong. It's Naypyidaw, a new city created by the Genta, about 200 miles north from here. And to link those two cities, they created a huge highway that we're going to try and take now. On the 6th of November 2005, at 6.37 in the morning, they decided to transfer the capital from Yangon to Naypyidaw. Thousands of civil servants were obliged to go to Naypyidaw. As for the population, it learned the transfer only two months later. From here on, no tourists are allowed. Only uh, businessmen and officials can come through. So from here on, we'll try and keep a low profile uh, because we don't want to get arrested. Naypyidaw means city of the kings. 
simple and humble as usual. There is no downtown here that would be too dangerous. The capital was built in zones. A zone for luxury hotels, another for malls. There's also a zone for the civil servants' houses and high security zones, such as ministries. Here, the Ministry of Information. And here, the police ministry and a bit further, the military zone, with their army camp. A highly protected zone, but we're not gonna stick around here because it's too risky. You should know that half of the regime's 400,000 soldiers are stationed here in the new capital. And Burma is simply the biggest army in the region. After China, of course. Naypyidaw is also a little paradise for the regime's bureaucrats. Drinking water, electricity round the clock. The city is like a giant VIP space surrounded by 200,000 armed bouncers. And inside, it's first class, all the way. So here we're in the middle of the, the capital and we found this, uh, this golf here, this golf practice. And there's just absolutely nobody. There must be a huge, economic failure, this place. Well, let's give it a try, anyway. Yes, wonderful. This place in the middle of nowhere looks like a, a fake city. There's just nobody. You have all the services you can imagine, but nobody to use them. Except me. Living in Burma today is a bit like if someone made you watch a really bad movie in a gigantic open-air prison. The regime has staged a grotesque play on a countrywide scale, a show in which the Burmese are both the main audience and the primary victims. A huge masquerade that's been dragging on for half a century. Don't follow that memoir. 